Hola, welcome to Inside the Summit League. The final championship of the Summit League sports season is going on right now in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oral Roberts hosting the Summit League Baseball Championship. North Dakota State, South Dakota State, and Western Illinois are the qualifiers this year. Here are the finals from the first round games that were played on Wednesday. The tournament is double elimination, runs through Saturday. And Oral Roberts has won this tournament every year that they have been in the Summit League. They're playing for their 18th straight tournament title this week. And ORU goes into the tournament with an all-time tournament record of 56 wins and three losses. Fort Wayne was the last team to beat Oral Roberts in the tournament. That was last year. But ORU came out of the loser's bracket, beat Fort Wayne twice to win the tournament championship again. Oral Roberts went 25-4 and four in the regular season this year. The Golden Eagles sweep the postseason awards announced this week. The honors include Player of the Year Noah Cummings, a junior from California. He led the league in RBI this year, had 64 runs batted in overall, and 35 RBIs in 29 Summit League games. Uh, Cummings hit 13 homers. That was second only to his teammate, Brent Williams, at Oral Roberts. Cummings had one six-game stretch this year in April when he went 12 for 14, hit five homers, and drove in 13 runs. He was outstanding. So they have the player of the year. They also have the pitcher of the year, Miguel Alsua, also a junior. The left-hander led the league with 10 wins. He went 8-0 in the Summit League. He also led the league with a 1.04 ERA, only allowed seven earned runs in 60 and one-third innings this year. Newcomer of the year, Dylan Snipes, also a junior. Played a couple years at a JUCO before coming to Oral Roberts. Led the league in hits this year with 73 in 53 games. And he was also fourth in batting average at 332. And the coach of the year for the third year in a row, Ryan Fulmer is in his fifth year now as the head coach at Oral Roberts. And in the Summit League the last three seasons, his team has been very impressive, going 72 and 17 in Summit League regular season games in the last three years. And the all Summit League baseball teams are out this week. You can find them on the league website. And of the 14 guys on the first team, 10 of them play for Oral Roberts. So, ORU has been awesome this year, but Western Illinois has the league batting champion and South Dakota State has the longest win streak going into the league tournament. The best of baseball from the last week of the regular season coming up next. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, South Dakota Corn, and Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. Welcome back. The Summit League Baseball Tournament continues tonight, runs through Saturday in Tulsa. Western Illinois is back in the tournament after missing out the last two years. The Leathernecks led this year by the top two average guys in the Summit League. Adam McGinnis and Mitch Ellis finished 1-2 in batting average in Summit League play. McGinnis at 385, Ellis at 354. And Ellis drives in McGinnis for the only Western Illinois run in their regular season finale against Oral Roberts. ORU wins the game 6-1, to one, and with that, Oral Roberts on a six-game win streak going into the Summit League Tournament. But that is not the longest in the league. That streak belongs to South Dakota State. South Dakota State finishes the regular season with eight straight wins, including three in a row at home against Omaha in three really good games. Omaha to the lead in game one. Grant Supanchik with an RBI for the Mavericks. He is the first-team All-Summit League designated hitter this year. Jacks come back, though, with the long ball. Luke Ringhofer, his first home run of the season in 185 at-bats, and the Jacks up 2-1. to one. Jacks up 3-2 in the seventh. Matt Johnson with an RBI single. Johnson fourth in the league and runs batted in this year with 39. South Dakota State leads 5-3 through eight innings. Chris Halber comes on for his eighth save, lowers his ERA to 0.65 in this series. South Dakota State wins game one. Game two, Omaha. Runs early. Jack Kalina with a single. Anthony Schneider was going to come up throwing in left field. Muffs it. Cole Patterson keeps going. Scores. Slips. Still safe. Mavericks lead it 2 to nothing. Jack's getting back, though, in the bottom of the fifth. And watch this. You still have to throw four pitches for an intentional walk in college baseball. The Mavericks do not execute on this one. Landon Badger scores on the wild pitch. South Dakota State gets going. Anthony Schneider drives in two runs. Matt Johnson coming around. And he is safe, safe, safe. Jacks get four in the fifth. They lead it four to two. Ethan Kenkel in his fancy high socks with the win. His fourth of the season. South Dakota State takes game two, seven to two. Game three, South Dakota State with four runs in the bottom of the first. Josh Koonsman, 
bisects the gap on the left side, just gets through. Tony Colsing and Luke Ringhofer score. And South Coast State up early 4-1. to one. Omaha rallies in the top of the second inning. Grant Supanchik again shoots that through the right side, and the Jacks bobble it. Couple of runs score, game tied 4-4. Stays that way until the fifth inning. Josh Koonsman with a ground ball right through the five hole on Jake Thompson. Jacks get an unearned run to take the lead. Chris Halber gets his ninth save of the year, ties him for the league lead, and South Dakota State on an eight-game roll going into the Summit League Tournament. Up next, North Dakota State softball. The Summer League Tournament champions pull off a huge upset in the regional round of the NCAA Tournament. Welcome back. Well, this might not have been North Dakota State's best softball team ever, but the Bison finished up the season in style, coming back to beat IUPUI twice to win the Summer League Tournament title. And then in the NCAA Tournament, everybody cringed a little bit when it was announced that they would play Oklahoma in the opening round, but... The Bison go out and they bump off the defending national champions. First inning, two out, one on, and Vanessa Anderson off the Big 12 Pitcher of the Year, Paige Parker, and the Bison are up two to nothing just like that. Because of the weather, they had to wait 24 hours to finish this game, and when they did, Jacqueline Sturdick was fabulous for North Dakota State. A couple of strikeouts to end the fifth inning. Oklahoma with just two hits and no runs through five innings. The Sooners do break through in the bottom of the sixth, two runs to tie the game at two, and it stays that way until the top of the ninth inning. Montana DeCamp reaches on an air. They move her to second with a sacrifice bunt. And then Tabby Hines brings her home. North Dakota State leads 3-2. to two. And then DeCamp, who had just scored the go-ahead run, look at this grab out in shallow left field. Just flat out robbing them. And then Serdic ends it with another strikeout. And the Summit League champions beat the Big 12 champions in the opening round. So the Bison trying to keep the mojo going against Tulsa. Sturdick back in the circle, perfect through five innings again. 15 up, 15 down. North Dakota State scores first, bottom of the sixth. A rip by Stavro all the way to the fence. And Zoe is in at second. And then she is doubled in by Stephanie Soriano. And it's one to nothing North Dakota State. But Tulsa gets two in the top of the seventh. The Bison commit a couple of errors. Tulsa takes a 2-1 lead into the bottom of the seventh. The Bison get the tying run to second base, but they cannot get her home. And Tulsa wins this one 2-1. So, North Coast State's still alive, but they got to go up against Oklahoma again. The Sooners not messing around. They get a three-run homer in the first inning, out to a 4-0 lead. Oklahoma with another three-run homer in the sixth. And the Sooners with the 10-2 win to end the season for North Dakota State. The Bison finished 29-32 and 32 overall. It's the first time in the last 10 years they have not won at least 30 games, but they do get the tournament win over Oklahoma this year. Oklahoma beat Tulsa in the region championship, and the Sooners are in the super regional round. They will play Auburn in a best-of-three series starting on Friday. Up next, some Summit Leaguers set to throw some weight around in the field events at the NCAA Championship prelims this weekend. Welcome back. The NCAA Outdoor Track and Field Championship preliminaries are this weekend. There are 65 Summit League athletes competing, 24 of those from North Dakota State, 20 from the University of South Dakota. And those two schools feature some of the best female field athletes in the United States. First, here's a vi uh, visit with Danielle Waldner at South Dakota, and then the entire weight throwing team at North Dakota State. A four-sport athlete in high school, USD senior Danielle Waldner felt track and field was the best fit for her in college. Yeah, I fell in love with it slowly as I got older. I hated it actually as a young kid and then started to like it more and more as I got a little better and progressed. My cousin was a professional track athlete actually. She just retired this past year, so I think that just helped me fall in love with it even more. Coming out of high school, the Redfield South Dakota native received the most interest from USD and the University of Sioux Falls when it came to her throwing talents. My brother actually got into med school down here, so it made it a little bit more like they had just the little advantage on them. So, Becoming a coyote certainly worked out, and Waldner didn't waste any time stepping up when she set foot in Vermilion. She broke the school record in the shot put in her first season outdoors and continued over the next four years to re-break her own record. Waldner is now five feet past that original mark from her freshman season, though the work to get where she is now has been challenging at times, coaching her has not. That's the great thing about Danielle is that um, everything dealing with her with 
uh, get, making sure she's here in time, making sure she's going hard, all these different things. It's just issues I don't have to deal with. Um, and so it's, it's fun to have that type of person that's just such a great person wanting to do all and then have talent along with that and be able to kind of put those two together and really be able to finally see the things come all together as accumulation of working with Coach Custis before me and then working with me for these now two years. It's been great to be able to see her finally be able to hit those things where I know she's been able to know where she could go to and be able to start to hit those right now at the right time of the year and the right time of her career. Well, the hard work is definitely paying off. Waldner is currently ranked 20th in the nation in the shot put. But college throwing involves more than just the shot and disc she threw in high school. Add in hammer throw, the weight throw, and the javelin, and things can get complicated. I had three hour javelin practices trying to learn it. Couldn't really figure it out. Finally figured it out at the end. Hammer was just as tough. It's still the most frustrating event I do. I'm still not all the way there, but trying to figure it out is just unbelievably hard and frustrating. For apparently not being all the way there, Waldner is doing just fine. She holds the school records in the weight and hammer throw. This isn't too surprising when you have a three-time Olympian as your throwing coach, however. Coach Kruger says that Waldner has been all in from the start when he arrived at USD at the beginning of her junior year in 2015. You know, the first probably two or three months, and this was probably with everyone, they kind of looked at me like I was a little crazy with the things I was putting them through and with weightlifting, with running, with all these different things, with technical stuff. Um, but seeing the maturity of her responding to the stuff and really taking it in and being very coachable. Coming in, we didn't know who he was really at all, and I remember looking him up and seeing this one picture and I just got really scared, didn't know what to expect. And he came up to me one day and I was like, you're nothing what I expected you to be and he just comes in and makes it so much fun for us. He's loved it for 20 plus years and now we get to enjoy the love that he has for it in his coaching. The track and field record books at North Dakota State have been completely rewritten in the last five years, due largely in part to the throwing program. But this year, one fearsome foursome in particular really knows how to drop the hammer on its competition by throwing a hammer longer than any other group in the country. The NDSU women's hammer throwers have four athletes that average a best mark of nearly 199 feet, tops in the NCAA, but this group isn't all that stunned. It doesn't surprise me because our coach is Justin Sinclair, and uh, I mean, he's one of the best there is, so it makes sense why we're as good as we are. Here, here, not here, not back behind. I think coach is a very good coach, very knowledgeable, definitely knows what he's doing, and I think he does a very good job of using his resources and coaching us well here. We strive to be number one. That's, it's not an expectation, but I mean, it's, it's what we strive for here at NDSU. And every week, Justin would come to us and be like, hey, like, we're number two right now. Like, what are you going to do about that this weekend? This collection of throwers features a senior, a junior, a sophomore, and a freshman. With so much quality and depth, every day at practice pushes everyone to make progress and help each other grow. Everyone's improved this year, and it's just everyone motivates each other. Everyone wants to, like, friendly but beat each other and it's good like we push each other to be the best that we can be. It's really a great opportunity because every day you're practicing with your competition and it's really great to see those people that you practice with and have a good relationship with do well. And I think that's one special part about our team is we're very supportive of each other. NDSU travels to meets all over going up against some of the best teams and athletes in the country but when the Bison take the field there is no fear. We are not afraid at all going into these meets and seeing UCLA or Texas and Stanford and so it's super cool and, and they know who we are as well so that gives us a lot of like a lot of pride and enjoyment of who we are. We're pretty well known in the throwing community in college so it's it's just awesome that we've been able to get there in such a short amount of time. And not only are the bison throwers turning heads in the hammer throw, they also rank second in the discus and third in both the javelin and shot put. It's just been amazing that I've been a part of this and I feel like I'm on the upper end of it and I know that there's many, many years to come with great exceptional throwers. So it's, it's really great to be part of that. Training is much more intense and more frequent. So trying to get like settled into everything all at once was hard, but it was worth it. My confidence and my goals have been higher since I've gotten to college. And I'm, I'm shocked at where I am, but it's a good thing and I'm still driven. That's kind of like our little motto, is get 1% better every day. So by the time it comes to actually compete and times to put the results up, that you're ready to go at 100%.
Well, here are some of the best marks in the nation from these two teams. Alyssa Olin at North Dakota State, fifth best in the Javelin going into the national prelims. Weimers Kirk is ranked seventh in the Hammer. Waldner fourth in the Shot Put. And Emily Grove at South Dakota is number two in the nation right now in the pole vault. Chris Nelson at USD has the best pole, uh, pole vault mark in the country right now. Maddie Mortimer at NDSU, second in the javelin. Alex Renner currently sixth in the nation in the shot put. And best of luck to everybody this weekend. Well, up next, an ode to Omaha. Maverick seniors going out with some great memories of their time as Summit League student athletes. Inside the Summit League on Midco Sports Network is presented by Sanford Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, Dakota Land Honda, South Dakota Corn, and Grand Falls Casino and Golf Resort. Welcome back. Omaha was an outstanding addition to the Summit League back in 2012, and we finish up this week with a see you later from some of the Omaha senior athletes. There's just a passion for, for growth here. And I think that's, that's one of the really cool things that I've noticed and that I've been a part of. People in Omaha care about this university and, and this school and the athletics, and it's just gonna take that next step. People talk about, yeah, I'd love to go to UNO. It seems like a really a great place to be, and it really is. It's almost just turning into a pipeline of a school that you could go and you could really shine. I would definitely say that I'm proud to be a Maverick and just kind of be within that legacy of our school. I think over the past four years, Omaha has done an amazing job of just showing how much potential we have, showing all this growth that we've done in just four years. I think there's just endless opportunities for anyone who comes to Omaha and I feel very blessed. A lot of us are lucky enough where we get to play a sport as our full-time job and I know that I would never trade that for anything. The experiences that I've had, just the character that it's built through UNO, I've definitely just made a huge network of people that are going to help me be successful for the rest of my life. It's been incredible, you know, it's, it's helped me understand different kinds of people, be able to lead different people. You know, on the soccer team we got guys from seven different countries with all kinds of different backgrounds, with all kinds of different stories. So. When dealing with like each one of the guys individually, you got to adapt to them and their cultures and you know the way that they think, and it just helped me learn a lot about different people. Holly Hunting's kick toward the goal is off the post and in. Goal for the Mavericks. Shot front court. Preston, a three-pointer at the buzzer. She backed it in. As an athlete, someone somewhere is always watching you, so. It's important to be somebody that those people can either look up to or just respect in general. Once you have that opportunity as a Division I athlete, I think it's important to just realize yourself that the community is a place where you can really make a big impact from going to Children's Hospital to going to nursing homes and just spending time with your community. Having that platform has been really awesome for us. I think community involvement is important just because little kids look up to you. You don't see it, but once you like get to meet the kids and stuff like that, it's always a great feeling to see them smile. And it's not just like when I'm on around UNO campus. Like when I go to like the mall or something like that, I'll have kids like can, like thank me for like the great game I had or something like that. It's just a great feeling to know that kids are looking up. One, two, three. Kicks it out to Lujan, three-pointer from the left corner, right there. The Mavericks pulled off the upset. I really expect to see UNO popping up. You hear the Sports Center, no, 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 and we're going to be there. So I just think that it's really grown, and it's something that's not going to stop growing. In just a couple of years, you're going to be seeing girls from our team competing at nationals, making those cuts and stuff. And the records that I have probably won't even exist in another year or two. So I think that the future is really bright. I consider this place my home just because of the friendships I've made, the commitment and time that I put into um, the school and the program and the city. Omaha as a name, as a brand, as a school, as a sports team has just become huge and I think that's something that's really awesome. I mean the brand has really grown and it's definitely a spot that people are going around and they've seen us, they've heard of us and sometimes they're scared of us so it's a good good place to be. Here's the kick and it's in in Omaha. Able to win in the penalty kick stage. Lob back door. Tyus with a jam. The Mavs come from behind. So shot to see the quick set and it's down. Mavericks win. 
I am so excited that I get to say I am a MAV alumni. I think the concept of once a MAV, always a MAV could not be more true. And I know that 10, 15 years down the road, I will still be so proud to say that I went to UNO. More than anything, I have this Maverick family. And once a MAV, always a MAV, just to me means more that I'm gonna have the relationships that I built here forever and we're gonna have these memories to look back on. I think it just defines who we are once we leave. It's like we're never really truly leaving and we're always still gonna to wanna to be a part of the programs and the school. One of our sayings from our coaches, like once a MAV, always a MAV, and I think it's a great saying It's gonna stick with uh, UNO for a while, and, and uh, another thing the coaches used to say, it's a great day to be a MAV, and we always say that on game days, just to get us pumped up and motivated. It's a good thing, it's a good feeling. This university is 100% on the map. Yeah, I always see when you get off 72nd Street on I-80, it has the billboard, welcome to our campus, in parentheses, otherwise known as Omaha, and that's so true. You come here loving this place, and you leave loving it more. Yeah, I wanted to stay in Omaha. I wanted to be here, and I wanted to be a part of something that was going to be big and that I could help build. You know, can't really ask for more, and I, I just hope the rest of my life has been as good as these last four years have been for me. Well, we will see you next week. Here's an update from the Summer League Baseball Tournament and tonight's matchups there. There is a live stream of all of the games on the Summer League website.